Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown Boss, man. I'm your host, Bull. In today's video, we will be updating you on everything that has to do with the transfer portal as usual. And then we'll also be talking about, is it wise to try to build your football team through the transfer portal? You still have to recruit the old school way and build it up with the proper pieces, depth, culture, all those different types of things from the high school ranks. All right, so let's start off talking about our defensive line in the transfer portal. Huge news there as Big O has officially come out and stated that he will be back for the 2024 season. So it's one of the guys that we've been asking about and, you know, we we're hopeful that he would come back for 2024, but he just had not made it official, but he has. And it also sounds like we are going to be getting some more, uh, you know, I guess updates from some other players on this roster, especially on the front here soon. It sounds like we are going to get back everybody that's eligible to come back on our fronts. Now that's huge, okay? That is a really big deal because as we always talk about on this channel, football is won and lost in the trenches. And getting back some vets that have, you know, played in this system, but have also, you know, played in the SEC and understand what it takes. Guys who are going to be, you know, trying to increase their draft stock and guys that are obviously coming back to try to win a championship. You know, that's the heart and soul of your football team. Getting those guys back is going to be absolutely huge. So everything else outside of it is going to be okay. Uh, we just have to kind of get some bodies in just to fill in that depth. But I feel very, very confident right now just knowing that we're probably going to be getting back both of our offensive front and defensive fronts next season. Next guy that I want to talk about is Marad Watson. Okay, that is the defensive lineman from New Jersey. Okay, he's going to be coming in in the 2024 class. And he's a guy that whenever you watch this film, it's a whole lot for you to love. He's gonna be visiting Tennessee this weekend. It would be beautiful, man, if we could somehow get him to commit to us before he leaves out of Knoxville. I think that that would be huge because again, you know, it sounds like we're gonna be fine, uh, you know, especially at defensive tackle with everyone coming back, okay? Again, some guys have not come out and announced it just yet, but we are anticipating that they will. So really what you want to do is you want to be able to continue to build that depth for future seasons because a lot of the guys, you know, from our fronts are going to be leaving us next year. Uh, and defensive tackle is a place that we are very thin at. And I don't know how we keep on finding these great players, uh, you know, towards the end of these cycles, but we've been doing a phenomenal job at it. Uh, and Maraud is another one. Really, really looking forward to seeing what comes out of that video. All right, next guy that I want to talk about is Jamal Wallace. Okay, so he is a high school safety turned defensive lineman and he is playing at Sierra College right now. He's a Juco guy. He's a guy that Tennessee has been talking to for quite some time now. I don't believe that we've talked about him on the show just yet and I haven't seen really any of his film. The only thing that I have seen is some, you know, a couple of clips of him doing some, uh, you know, like working out, things like that. He looks pretty solid. Looks like he's a twitchy guy. Six foot four, 270 pounds. Should be able to come in and fill the void where Tyler Barron is leaving. It does sound like he really likes Tennessee, okay? Like I said, as a uh, you know high school safety, he started to follow Tennessee because of Eric Berry. So you have to hope that maybe a little bit of what Eric Berry shows on film, uh, you know, shows on Saturdays with that passionate play and just going, you know, going from sideline to sideline making plays. Hopefully he's gonna be that type of a player. And you know, obviously for him to be such a good athlete that he can move from safety to defensive line. And I think he plays more of an outside linebacker, uh, what he's at currently, but this shows he's a very versatile athlete. And I'm hoping that Tennessee can close out on him. He's got, I believe he can sign on December the 20th, but if I'm not mistaken, he also has, you know, until like January the 14th or 15th to decide where he's going to go. But expect to hear something from Jamal Wallace here shortly. Uh, and that would be a really big pickup for this team as a guy that we're going to have for the next, I think, one to two seasons. So, you know, that would be huge for this roster. The last thing that we're going to talk about with the defensive line uh, in this video is Kellen Lindstrom will be participating in ball practices. And, you know, obviously that is a really, really big deal. You know, um, having any of these, you know, 2024 guys coming up and practicing with us, it's, it's going to be huge. You know, we're going to be able to hear how they look. Uh, you know, compared to the players already on this roster. He's another guy just like Jamal Wallace that could potentially be that strong side in that is more of a run stopper. And I really like his film, you know, like we talked about, he's a guy that can also rush that passer. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he does once he gets on the campus. All right, now let's shift gears to the tight ends. We all know that we need a tight end in the absolute worst way. Okay, so Holden stays. We talked about him visiting Georgia. 
He was supposed to be visiting Oklahoma. He's canceled that Oklahoma visit. His decision is coming, okay? Is it gonna be Georgia? Again, he is from Georgia. Sounds like Brock Bowers is gonna be leaving Georgia this season. So there is a void there. Does he feel like he can fill it? Did Georgia make a good enough pitch? Sounds like it's probably between us and them. Um, you know, I always like our odds versus Georgia. Uh, but uh, this is going to be a tough one. So we will, we will hear more about that, I, you know, I believe in the coming days, uh, if not today, actually. And then also, you know, Jordan Dingle is going to be visiting us this weekend. He is the tight end prospect that we have or, you know, that we've offered from Kentucky. A lot of y'all really, really like him. I still haven't seen much of his film. I've seen him play some. Uh, you know, I do like what he brings to the table. Hopefully we can close out on him. Uh, you know, it's really going to be down between whoever commits first, I think, out of him and Stays. So that's why I'm saying you may see something from Stays here pretty shortly. Um, and or, you know, you may, may see or hear something from Dingo here shortly. I believe that he is going to be on campus today and uh, he will be staying with us, I believe, up until Sunday. So expect to hear some good news this weekend. Again, we've got to close out on a tight end in a very, very desperate way. All right, so Tennessee also has a new high school target in Cole Harrison. He is a six foot five, 220 pound tight end from San Mateo, California. That sounds like that's a beautiful place. Right now, it is down between us and I believe Washington State is the next closest team. Uh, but Cole will be on campus this weekend and I really, really like his film. You know, he's only a three star, but this just kind of goes to show you that it's not all about those stars, okay? If you watch him run routes, he's a, he runs great routes and he catches with his hands, okay? Now, he's probably rated as a three-star because, you know, he's got the prototype frame. This has to fill it out some, okay? He's a little bit on the lighter side. He looks more like a pass-catching tight end on film. Um, and, you know, he's probably not like the fastest guy, but if you look at what he can bring to the table, okay? And I've also seen him be physical enough. Looks like he is willing to block. He just looks like an overall good football player. Uh, you know, I think that once he gains some weight, he's going to be an absolute problem in his system. And you're talking about if he comes in, if he can gain about 20 pounds, okay, I don't know how quickly he can do that. Probably going to be a guy that won't get to see the field very much this season, but I do expect for our true freshmen uh, at tight end to see the field because we see the position that we're in right now uh, with Ethan Davis being a guy that has barely played for us. I think that we're going to try to get our true freshman onto the field a lot more. So I do expect for him to be able to come in and hopefully if, you know, works hard, gains the weight, we can see him some, you know, maybe kind of like in some mop-up duty. But, you know, in the following season, I expect for him to be one of the guys. Okay, so really, really looking forward to seeing how that visit uh, plays out. And, you know, I would not be surprised if this guy does commit to Tennessee before he leaves last all right, and a quick note from the offensive line, Jalen Farmer is finishing up his visit. We talked about him some. That is the guard from Florida, so hopefully things go well there. You know, obviously we do need to add, you know, a little bit more, I would say maybe like veteran depth there, especially at left guard. You want to create some more competition and really push these guys. But we are also going to be having a few of our, uh, you know, true freshman offensive linemen will be on campus also for bowl practices. All right, and those guys are William Satterwhite, Jesse Perry, Max Anderson, and Gage Ginther. Okay, so again, very, very interested to see how they measure up with guys already on campus. Uh, you know, I'm hoping to hear some good news. Gage Ginther is a guy that, you know, I really, I mean, really, I like all these guys filming. But I think that, you know, early on, Gage Ginther was a guy that I liked his film maybe the most. But Max Anderson, he's a dog. William Satterwhite, he's a dog. Jesse Perry has looked good too. So excited to see what these young men bring to the table. All right, so moving on to the secondary, Jermod McCoy, that is the cornerback from Oregon State. And, you know, we're really, really high on what we saw from him on film. He finished up with his visit uh, with us and uh, sounds like it went really, really well. Okay, it sounds like, uh, you know, Willie Martinez and, um, and his father actually bonded pretty well on that visit. So that's always really good news. Now, he is going to be visiting Texas A&M, I believe, uh, you know, either this weekend or at some point this week. He's from Texas, so that's a, you know, obviously that's going to be a team that we have to kind of look out for. Don't know how that's going to play out. We have not done a good job closing with these secondary pieces. I have no idea how or why, but something is kind of going wrong there. I would love to see us close on him, and, uh, you know, I expect that we could hear something from him maybe this week. Okay, it sounds like he's kind of starting to narrow things down, but there's also kind of a part of me that says that this could go on a little bit longer. Uh, I think that if he does commit early, uh, it could kind of favor us. But, you know, we'll see after he comes off of this Texas A&M visit 
definitely a team for us to look out for. Now, also, you know, we talked about Jalen Sensiball, okay, uh, as a guy that is going to be coming into the 2024 class. He also plays cornerback, and it uh, sounds like Tennessee is doing their best to bring him into the 2024 class. Uh, you know, Coach Heupel and a lot of other members from the staff visited with uh, Mr. Sensiball on Thursday, and as we also talked about, he's going to be visiting Mizzou today. So he starts his visit with Mizzou today. He had a visit with us last week. Um, and so, you know, we're just trying to make sure that we can do everything to try to bring him in. It does sound like Tennessee is the, uh, you know, favorites in this race. So we'll see how that visit plays out. We'll probably have some more news on that at some point this weekend, probably like around Sunday, maybe Monday. But, uh, you know, I am expecting some really good news from Mr. Sensible. As far as the secondary pieces that will be participating in the bowl practice, we've got Mr. Boo Carter, who, you know, again, I think that he may end up playing offense, but I do think that they'll probably start him off playing a little bit of defense. But do not be surprised if we hear early on that Boo Carter is being moved all over the place in this bowl practice, okay? These guys are going to be primarily doing it like scout team for us. Um, so, you know, depending on the types of looks that we want to get, uh, you know, in these practice sessions, We'll see these guys kind of move around. Now, the other guy's going to be Marcus Gorey Jr. We talked about him potentially being able to play star or safety uh, for this football team. So excited to see what these young men are going to be bringing to this roster. And, uh, you know, again, man, I'm just very, very excited to hear all the news and notes that comes out surrounding these young true freshmen that are coming up on campus here. All right, so last guy that we're going to talk about in this transfer portal is Chris Brazil. He's the wide receiver from Tulane. He's going to be visiting Colorado this weekend, and it sounds like we and Colorado are the favorites, uh, you know, to land Chris Brazil. We talked a whole lot about how he could absolutely help this team out in a major, major, major way. Would love to be able to add him to this roster. I think that he's a plug and play guy, pretty much probably wherever he goes. Um, you know, I don't really know what the sell would be up there with Coach Prime, but we all know. I mean, that is that's Deion Sanders, and it's kind of hard to tell them no, but. I think that honestly speaking, he's not going to be there very long. I think that once his sons graduate, like once they move on, I think that he's probably going to want to move on. I just don't see him staying there for too much longer. He might stay for like another year or two. But, you know, I think that some of these players are going to be able to kind of see that, like have a little bit of foresight and see that really, you know, he's looking for a stable quarterback situation. There's no way, uh, you know, that Nico is not a more stable quarterback than, you know, Mr. Sanders up there in Colorado because he's going to be going pro next season for sure. Uh, you know, Nico has to stay at least for two more seasons. So to me, it just makes more sense. It sounds like Tennessee should be the favorite, but we'll see what happens coming out of this visit. That is one for sure to keep a very, very close eye out on. And as far as the wide receivers that will be on campus, we've got Mr. Mike Matthews, okay, Mr. Five Star himself, and Mr. Braylon Staley. Braylon Staley sounds like he is dominating. I believe he's in like a South Carolina Shrine game, like East West or some type of a game. But everyone who I've heard, all the analysts that I've heard talk about him are saying, hey, he looks like the best player out here, period. And they're already saying that, hey, he's very, very underrated. But we knew that, right? Like us, us volunteer fans that have actually watched film on him, we knew that he was a dog. We knew that he was very underrated. So. You know, again, kind of talking about Chris, you would love to have him. Obviously, you know, you can never have, I don't think, too many great playmakers. But these two guys, Coach Heifel, please dumb down the system and let these young men get on the football field. They can help us out tremendously. Um, and so, you know, I'm hoping to hear a lot of good things, you know, again, about them. The other guys that we have that are going to be on campus that we have not mentioned in this video up to this point, is going to be Jake Merklinger. Okay, that's the quarterback from Georgia. Um, you know, he's going to be a very good player. And then we've also got Peyton Lewis, who is the running back. So expecting to hear a lot from all of these young men. All right, so let's shift gears and let's talk about what's been going on with Tennessee and the transfer portal this season. So we have lost several players, and I think that most of us kind of feel like those were players that had to make some room for some of this younger talent uh, and maybe to kind of be able to upgrade in some areas as well. So we've lost a lot more than we've gained because we have not gained anyone as of yet. But I think that some of those commitments are coming, okay, with the tight ends especially, and that is the position that concerns me the most because we need tight ends in the worst way. Really, all we have is one. We talk about that at Najee. So, hopefully, we can close out on one of those this weekend. But it's brought up the conversation of, you know, is it okay, or you know, is it smarter to kind of do it the way that Tennessee's doing it, where we're kind of slow playing, 
making sure that we're getting the correct guys in, uh, you know, for our culture, for our system, things like that. We're not going to spend too much on one guy here or there. Um, and, you know, we're basically just going to build up our roster the old fashioned way with high school players. Or should we be more like some of these other teams that are very, very heavy in the transfer portal and targeting some of these star players? And they don't mind spending that money. It seems like they don't really care about what it's going to do to their culture. They're not worried about it. Well, I want to pull up the numbers from 2023. So last year's transfer portal rankings. And as you're going through this list, okay, you're seeing some teams that were ranked highly, okay, like LSU, they were ranked highly preseason. Ole Miss is a team that had a pretty solid season, okay? I think that they went 10 and two. USC was a bust of a season. Auburn, you know, I think they actually played well just considering that they took Alabama and Georgia to the very, very end of the game, Florida State obviously had a great season. Um, you know, if it wasn't for their quarterback getting hurt, they would have been in the playoffs. Miami had a pretty solid season. Oklahoma actually beat Texas, uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they had a pretty good season. Uh, you know, Oregon, uh, you know, they had a solid season. UCLA, they had a bust of a season. So, you know, whenever you look at this, you don't see any playoff teams in here outside of, you know, some of you could argue that Florida State was a playoff team because they didn't lose a game. But, uh, I mean, you know, outside of Florida State, you don't really have anybody. So now let's take a look at the playoff teams and let's see what their rankings were. All right, so as you can see, Michigan was 17th in the transfer portal rankings last season. Texas was 48th, Alabama was 53rd, Washington was 46th. All right, and so, you know, whenever you're looking at this, it's like, okay, well, these guys didn't really do much in the transfer portal, but what you're seeing is they have a lot more of four and five star guys in the transfer portal. And for those of you that were wondering, I'm going to tell you right now that Michigan in 2022 finished 56th in the transfer portal. So, you know, way lower than where they are right now. Texas finished fifth in the transfer portal and Alabama finished at number six. Washington was at 24. So it does sound like, you know, they are kind of filling some needs where need be. Uh, but, you know, they really are targeting, again, more of the blue chip players. OK, so the five and four stars, they're not necessarily going out and getting some of these, uh, you know, like unranked players. Now, I think that Tennessee has done a great job of that. If you look at a guy like, you know, Castles, uh, you know, Cali Castles coming in, he was a guy that was not ranked at all. Like he didn't have any stars, um, you know, as a transfer player, at least, um, you know, per 24 seven sports. So he's a guy that obviously fit our system well and he played well for us. Okay, and also for those of you wondering, Tennessee finished 36th this season in the transfer portal and the season before that, we were 47, all right? and. Um, Looks like we got eight commits uh, in 2022, one four star and four three stars and everyone else's wasn't ranked. All right, so it does seem like there is a bit of a strong correlation for some of these teams at least uh, in being able to finish high in the transfer portal rankings. Um, and you know, maybe like in a year or two, if you get some guys that you can kind of get into your system and let them spend some time with you, does sound like you know it can benefit your football team now let's take a look at what the high school rankings were for these teams in the playoffs michigan in 2022 finished ninth and then in 2023 they finished 17th texas in 2022 finished fifth and in 23 they finished third so right there you can already see there is a drastic difference in the level of talent from what texas has to what michigan has now let's come on down to alabama alabama in 22 finished second and in 23 they finished first all right so again if you look at what they did in their high school ranks and then add that on with what they did in the transfer portal they've got a whole lot of dogs and a whole lot of stuff that's on their team okay now washington finished 95th okay in 2022 and then in 2023 they finished 26 okay and all of that is per 24 7 sports so Whenever you're looking at that, it does kind of seem like, again, there is a direct correlation in the players that you are getting out of high school. I think that it's really more about getting in good quality players, but you also want to make sure that they're going to kind of stick around and that you can, uh, you know, help to groom them into the system. Um, and, you know, it seems like it bowls well, it bowls better for being able to win championships from that perspective. Now, I also saw this right here on Instagram and, uh, you know, it's just kind of showing the talent differences between all of these teams, right? It's showing how many five stars each team has, basically how many blue chips each team has. And I can tell you right now, we are going to see this play out in the playoffs. This is why I keep on trying to tell people, right? 
Alabama is probably going to win this whole thing. It's going to be Alabama and Texas because they are the most, they are the more talented teams. Okay, they are the two most talented teams that's left right now. So that's why I think that they're going to win. And I also think that they are better coached than any of these teams. Now, as crazy as this does sound, right, Washington is showing the least amount of talent. But I think that the way that they play, right, their style of play fits better into this system than Michigan's style of play. Because especially with Michigan's matchup, Michigan's matched up versus Alabama. We've talked about this several times, but I'm just going to, you know, just kind of emphasize this one more time. You're not going to play smash mouth football versus a team that's more talented than you that has a really, really good coaching staff. You're not going to be able to out bully them. And that's what Michigan's going to try to do to Alabama. It just does not bode well for them, in my honest opinion. Now, Texas versus Washington could be a very interesting matchup. Again, because Washington has a very, very good quarterback. They've got a good scheme. Um, you know, I think that they can score on Texas. That's going to be the biggest question is what's going to happen with their fronts. You know, I think that Texas's front is, is what's going to get Washington in trouble. I think that that's where Washington probably loses that game. And then we get the rematch probably, you know, I'm thinking Alabama versus Texas. And, you know, again, I think that the talent can win out in this, right? You saw Texas go into Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama with a, you know, less talented roster. But at the same time, Alabama didn't have their quarterback situation quite figured out. And that is a very key component too. who can win these games. That's a place that Tennessee has figured out, right? We've got our quarterback situation figured out. We've got our fronts on both sides figured out. Now all we have to do is just kind of solidify the back ends on both sides of the football. Well, I guess the back end on the defense. And then we've got to get the guys out wide. And we've got to get them up to speed. And I think that we are definitely going to do that. Again, we've got some young studs coming in on campus. We've already got some good guys on campus. I think everyone's going to take a gigantic leap forward. Some of y'all are saying that Tennessee is going to lose three to four games this season. I wonder where that fourth game is. Okay, I can get Oklahoma. Kind of a question mark, all right? But I think we should be able to win. Alabama, that's a big question mark. Georgia, that's another question mark. Who else do you see on the schedule that Tennessee could potentially lose to? Please leave that down in the comment section. But that's going to be it for this video, all right? Thank y'all so much for tuning in. P and I will be coming back to y'all. We'll have some updates probably this weekend, and we may be going live this weekend. So keep a close eye out on the channel for that. And, uh, you know, again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.